Okay, so um, what do you reckon? At the moment we use crude oil to fuel cars and so on, because um, we've got petrol. If we wanted to move across to this type of fuel cell in our cars or in your homes, what do you think is going to be one of the main problems? Converting it to Yeah, getting the technology. Yeah, but you're going to get with quite a lot of hydrogen. And what do you know about hydrogen? Hydrogen is really explosive. So, yeah, if you, so there's no point. Hydrogen's a gas, so it's got a large volume. So you've got to try and, con, yeah, you've got to try and transport it in some sort of possibly liquid form. This is going to go off with a, if you're going to get something happening, this is going to go off with a massive bang. Um, you've got compressed hydrogen. One of the things, well, first of all, I've got to get the hydrogen, haven't I? Where will I get hydrogen from? Water? Yeah, but to get to water, I've got to put electricity yeah. in to split the water yeah. up. So it's kind of like. Do you, not... can you use some gas reserves or other yeah. reactions? Yeah, what, what makes hydrogen? Cracking. Yeah. So you're still using the same amount. That's a lot of energy. But I've still, I still um, yeah, but I could be using the crude oil for other things and use the hydrogen for. So rather than burning crude oil, Obviously, a massive advantage is the product is just water. So I'm not polluting the atmosphere anymore. So if you've got this in cars, it's quite nice because you're not going to be coughing behind the car because it's just producing water. Will it come out of steam? Yeah. Uh, it depends on the, I imagine it'll probably drip out. Yeah. I imagine by the time it's gone. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is it, is it, yeah that's how it I guess a lot of it. I guess it depends on the temperature, how you know temperature of the engine is got to got to go. But uh, uh, yeah. on the roads, I think it's about it's a half hour store time, and then when you get home, it's empty. Down the road. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Well, you, you could drink it, it. Drink it. That's it. That's it. That's if you get stuck in. <laughs> so these are the key things you need to you need to know. So scientists in the car industry are developing fuel cell vehicles, um, and they're generally fueled by either hydrogen gas or very hydrogen rich fuels. Um, like uh, methanol um, and what you do is it's slightly weird is you take these gases and you convert them to hydrogen on board so you take um, something like methanol and then you you so I have a converter which converts it to hydrogen on board the car obviously having methanol is a lot safer than having a big tank of hydrogen in your car Will it just drive over it to the accelerator yeah I guess so yeah, yeah. Yeah, it'd be quiet, wouldn't it? Yeah, like those yeah. electric cars. Yeah, you know, no, you could, they have to add sound now to get electric cars. Yeah. It gets, I've just got a hydrogen yeah. electric car. Yeah. So you can't even hear it. You couldn't hear it. So they have to add They are really sound. quiet. Yeah. yeah. I've never driven one. Uh, right. Um, advantages. So, what are the advantages? Obviously, less pollution, less CO2. That's a big bonus. And generally, they're more efficient in terms of producing energy. These are pretty efficient things. Right, there are things. So some of the problems is how can we store the hydrogen? We can store it as a liquid under pressure. We can absorb it on the surface of a metal. Um, also, um, you can absorb it within a solid material. So what are our, what are our limitations of uh, moving towards? Uh, well, one of them is storing the hydrogen because it's safe. As we say, it's transporting it as well. Pretty tricky because it's a gas. Um, limited lifetime. Um, these fuel cells won't last forever. They don't have a huge lifetime. Um, so you're going to have to... Con and also, to make these fuel cells, I use quite a lot of toxic chemicals, which aren't good for the environment. So to actually get these in the first place, we're going to have to pollute the environment anyway. Um, so a hydrogen economy may contribute largely to future energy need, needs, but our limitations, first of all, is getting the public to accept this, because uh, getting the public to change ideas is, is, can be quite tricky. And also, um, you've got to get political parties to really push this through. Uh, obviously, keeping with petrol is much easier, politically, rather than forcing everybody to use hydrogen as a, as a fuel. Um, handling and maintaining them um, can be quite tricky as well. People are used to their car engines, petrol in, energy out. You're going to have to change the ideas of that. 
And as we talked about, you've got to get this hydrogen from somewhere. So you've got to manufacture the hydrogen, um, which isn't a straightforward process as well. So if we've got to the stage where we're having to uh, get water, we're having to do this reaction to get that, it's kind of getting a little bit mad because we'll be putting lots of energy in. However, what you could do, of course, is you could generate the electricity for this using like uh, wind power or something like that. And once you've got it, and once you've got it, you then pop it, have this in your car. So you could, in theory, do it uh, that you would use green energy sources on a massive scale to generate the hydrogen, and then you would do it on a small scale in cars, having it this way, and then overall you're not you're not polluting.